Now, while there's been an absolute onslaught of budget-friendly smartphones in 2020 thus far, it's still pretty damn rare to find one that creeps in under that £100 price point. But HMD has managed it with its latest Nokia 2.4. You've got a mighty 6.5-inch HD Plus screen. You've got a dual-lens rear camera. You've got that lovely stock version of Android and the promise of two years of Android upgrades on top of that. But is the Nokia 2.4 actually any good or is it essentially just a £99 paperweight? Well, I'm going to whip it on out of the box, take you on a full-on tour of the hardware and the software and also really test out the performance with a bit of gaming and that camera tech too. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. All right, there's the Nokia 2.4. What else do you get in the box? Bit of porky pin action, natch. An entire tree's worth of get started guides in basically every language known to man. You've got your dinky wee adapter. In my case, it's a European one because it's a European review model. And you've got your USB charging cable as well. My old nemesis, micro USB. Ugh. I thought you'd been vanquished, mate. Anyhow, that's everything in the Nokia 2.4 box, so now let's actually check out the phone. Now, I've got to say I'm a little bit gutted because it is unfortunately the charcoal -y, grey version of the Nokia 2.4, whereas on the box they're actually teasing you with the lovely vibrant purple version. You can actually pick up the Nokia 2.4 in a trio of colours. You've got that pinky purpley version, you've got this grey model, otherwise you've got a blue option as well. Or as HMD have labelled them, Dusk Charcoal and the rather charmingly titled Fjord. Here in Blight unfortunately the only available colour option is the dull and dutiful charcoal which to be fair is pretty fitting for 2020 anyway and it is a plastic finish as you would expect for under 100 bob but seems pretty solidly constructed to be absolutely fair and it's got this lightly textured sort of finish to the surface and as well which should just aid with grip and at least the Nokia 2.4's matte finish means that it won't pick up greasy, smudgy prints the way that glossy smartphones do. And the Nokia 2.4 also has very basic IPX2 splash resistance as well, so it'll be fine for, you know, taking it out in a bit of a rainstorm, something like that. As for the rest of the design, well, you've got your power button and your volume rocker over there on the right edge. If you twist over to the left edge, you've actually got a dedicated Google Assistant button on there as well, which seems to be cropping up on a lot of budget-friendly stock Android phones. And then around back, you've got that dual lens rear camera, which only juts very, very slightly from the rear surface which is nice to see and of course a rear mounted physical fingerprint sensor too. Now let's get the bugger open and see what we're dealing with as far as the sim slots go and it's good news there because not only do you have two sim slots but you've also got a completely separate slot for your micro SD memory card so you can expand the onboard storage by up to a further 512 gigabytes. So the Nokia 2.4 is all set up and ready for action and what you get here is the older Android 10 out of the box unfortunately it's not the freshest Android 11 uh, which you get in the likes of the Pixel phones but apparently it is Android 11 ready so hopefully it should be coming really soon and as the Nokia 2.4 is an Android 1 device that means it's basically stock Android there's been very little tinkering at all going on here you've got those two guaranteed years of Android updates as well which apparently according to the small print is from the global launch date of the Nokia 2.4 and as I mentioned before you've got that Google Assistant button of course as well so a quick push of that and eventually up it springs uh, I'm not really sure what the point of having a dedicated Google Assistant button is because of course you can just swipe from either bottom corner and again Google Assistant. You can even add an app icon to your desktop if you want to uh, access it that way so yeah loads of different options and of course to actually unlock the smartphone you've got that rear mounted fingerprint sensor and it doesn't seem like the most responsive scanner around but you know what it does the job absolutely fine and that is actually backed by a nice bit of face unlock action as well so just tap that power button springs to life hopefully will recognize my face Maybe the lighting wasn't quite right in that bit. Let's try it here next to the window. Yep, there we go. <laughs> so it seems easily thrown off if the lighting isn't quite right, but at least it's an alternative to the fingerprint sensor. And you've also got NFC support on here with full Google Pay action, so you can get your contactless payments on the go. Of course, the Nokia 2.4 is a bit of a beast at 6.5 inches, uh, which means that one-handed use is quite cumbersome, especially when you factor in the likes of this chunky bezel down beneath the display. I can just about sort of stretch to just beyond the halfway point of this screen. There's no proper one-handed mode for shrinking down the screen and you can't drag down that notifications bar from anywhere on the display either. Although you do at least get a fingerprint sensor gesture. Just swipe your finger down the fingerprint sensor as you can see there, then pause the notifications panel 
into view at all. It's not the most responsive. Sometimes it takes a couple of swipes to actually get it to work. Still, at least the phone's sort of reasonably comfortable to clutch helped along by the rounded corners and everything too. But what about that actual 6.5 inch display? Well, as you'd expect for 99 quid, it is a rather basic IPS panel. The top brightness, for instance, is the first thing that hits you. It's really not that awe-inspiring at all. So you will struggle to see this thing in a very strong daylight. And also when you're watching uh, movies on the likes of Netflix or Disney Plus, the HD Plus resolution, again, rather basic, 1600 by 720. So it does look a little bit grainy. But if you just want to occasionally kick back with, uh, you know, a little bit of YouTube or uh, a short show or something like that, it'll do the job just fine. As for your audio, well, it's a single speaker setup here on the Nokia 2.4. Again, not too surprisingly, just mounted here on the bottom end. So let's uh, give it a bit of a test, see what we got. Or, of course, you could always treat yourself to a snazzy new mobile because 2020 has actually been a pretty great year for budget blowers, although admittedly not for much else. <laughs> And yeah, it's basically, again, what you would expect from a £100 smartphone. Not the loudest on that top volume, but it'll be all right as long as you're not in too noisy an environment. And the clarity is absolutely fine. But what you'll want to do if you are enjoying a show or a bit of music or something is definitely get yourself a proper pair of headphones plugged in because you do actually get a headphone jack up top, something which is missing from most premium smartphones these days. Otherwise, you've also got a good bit of Bluetooth 5.0 support on this thing. Now, providing the grunt here on the Nokia 2.4 is the basic MediaTek Helio P22 processor. And it's backed here just by two gigs of RAM, which is a rather meager amount indeed. So unsurprisingly, the Geekbench scores are less than impressive, shall we say. Very basic 137 single core and 505 multi core, which is the lowest I've seen in quite some time. And you can grab a three gigabyte model of the Nokia 2.4, but unfortunately, it's not available here in Blighty just yet, uh, and it's only available in, yeah, in select markets. And yeah, I have noticed in uh, my little bit of time with the Nokia 2.4, it can be a little bit lethargic at times for sure. Sometimes flicking through the menus can be a bit stuttery uh, but you know what apps load up without too much of a grumble and if all you want is something you know to do basic message check-in web browse and all that sort of thing uh, it'll do the job again absolutely fine and it is also worth mentioning that with this two gigabyte of ram model you also only get 32 gigabytes of onboard storage which as you can see i've already half filled up just by installing a couple of my own apps but at least you do have that expandable storage and when it comes to the performance one of the key questions i always get asked is can you actually do any gaming on it and with the Nokia 2.4, I'm going to remain rather pessimistic, but I will give Call of Duty Mobile a go and see if it's actually playable. Yeah, please be patient is definitely a good slogan for the Nokia 2.4, that's for sure. So I tried a bit of Call of Duty Mobile action, and it wasn't the smoothest, more satisfying gaming experience in the world ever, that's for sure. The frame rate wasn't actually too bad, it did get a little bit choppy, even on those low detail settings, and a couple of times that did mean that unfortunately I didn't see my opponent until he'd already started blasting me in the face with his machine gun. But the main problem with gaming on the Nokia 2.4 is the screen responsiveness, which is kind of to be expected. Sometimes your pokes and swipes just take a little while to register before they finally actually happen in game, by which point again you're basically dead in one of these competitive online games. Weirdly, in what match I did actually manage to come top of my team uh, for number of kills. Not really sure how that happened as I wasn't performing particularly well, but I'd say if you want to do some gaming on the Nokia 2.4, stick to your basic single player offline titles rather than the competitive stuff. As for the battery, well, it's a 4,500 milliamp cell stuffed here on the Nokia 2.4, uh, so that should keep you going easily through a full day, probably well into a second day as well, depending on obviously how much you're hammering it. Certainly when I was playing Call of Duty, uh, a single match lasting about five minutes only took it down about sort of 2%. Although, yes, it is the dreaded micro USB when it comes to recharging. Ugh. And let's finish up this unboxing of the Nokia 2.4 by checking out that dual lens rear camera. And what you get here is a 13 megapixel primary sensor backed by a simple basic 2 megapixel depth sensor. And again, as with most aspects of the Nokia 2.4, I think as long as you temper your expectations, this should be absolutely fine for your everyday snaps, just for quick, simple, shareable shots on the likes of Facebook and stuff like that. So let's try getting a good shot of Mr. Monkey Dude. And yeah, it's not exactly packed with fine detail, the results in photo, though the conditions are quite ambient here in the studio, so I'll forgive it to that. Uh, the colours seem sort of reasonably accurately reproduced though. You've got all the usual bonus camera modes that you'd expect on here as well. So for instance, got a bit of portrait action. Uh, so you can just get a, get a bokeh style background effect on the go. And you can choose between a variety of different effects, including stars, hearts, butterflies, snowflakes. You can change how extreme that bokeh style effect is as well. And my testing seems absolutely fine. The edge detection is on point, helped along by that depth sensor, of course. 
You've also got a night mode that you can employ uh, when conditions are a bit more tricksy. Uh, so if you give that a tap, as you can see, it takes lots of different shots of different exposure levels, takes a little while. Now, since we've slightly oversaturated uh, Mr. Monkey in this case, those colours are looking a little bit washed out, but you do have a lot more background detail than before. And then when it comes to video, I believe you can shoot just up to full HD resolution video. Yeah, those are your choices, 720p or 1080p. And again, I wouldn't expect too much uh, from that video or more, just fine for your basic, simple home movie efforts. And then finally, if we flip to that front-facing camera, it's a 5 megapixel effort with fixed focus as well, so very, very basic indeed, so I certainly wouldn't expect much out of that at all. If you are a bit of a selfie fan, maybe uh, try elsewhere. I mean, look at that. I look almost as white as the walls. And I know I'm not exactly super bronzed at the moment, but geysers. And that, in a nutshell, is the Nokia 2.4, an extreme budget smartphone, just 99 quid here in Blighty. It should be absolutely fine if you just want something to browse the web, check your messages, check your social medias, all that kind of shenanigans. A bit more limited when it comes to uh, gaming. Uh, for instance, the camera tech is uh, rather basic at best. But if you don't expect too much, quite a lovable little device. What do you think of the Nokia 2.4? Are you tempted? Definitely be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If you've actually been using the 2.4 as well, be great to hear your own mini review. And please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. Cheers, everyone. Love you.